Let's deal up to 607 damage while fighting completely solo and overflowing with charisma or up to 856 damage if you happen to have some backup playing as Dante from Devil May Cry in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Don't worry, we're still gonna stay pretty true to character, but first things first, we gotta pick a race. And while Dante might look like a normal human most of the time, in actuality, his dad's a demon. So to play along with that, we're gonna grab the race Tiefling. There is the option to go with a variant Tiefling, and that's what we're gonna do. This gives us hellish resistance, giving us resistance to fire damage, and by choosing a variant Tiefling, we get one of three features. We can get Hellfire, which doesn't really fit very well, well, we can have wings, which is always helpful in D&D, but Dante doesn't fly most of the time unless he's in a purely devil form. So instead, we're going to take Devil's Tongue. And I think this fits because this automatically grants us the Vicious Mockery Cantrip. You're enough of a smart aleck that it literally hurts people's minds. This also allows you to cast Charm Person as a second level spell and Enthrall as a fifth level spell. Then when it comes to a background, Dante is pretty much a bounty hunter, so that's the background we're going to choose. This gives us skill proficiencies in Persuasion and Insight. Then when it comes to some starting stats, I know Dante has the ability to literally swing around a motorcycle as a weapon, but we need to make some sacrifices. And he's also able to dart around the battlefield pretty quickly, so we're gonna min-max this a bit. We're just gonna max out our dexterity, our constitution, and our charisma, bringing them all to 15, meaning we dump our strength, intelligence, and wisdom. Then we can choose our own racial bonuses, thanks to Tasha's Culture of Everything, and we'll boost our dexterity by one point and our charisma by two points. Then when it comes to a starting class, even though I know he uses plenty of firearms, we're gonna have to use the more magic-y version of that to make sure this build works in as many ways as we want. And if we wanna hit hard with charisma, one of the best classes to go is Warlock. When you take your first level in Warlock, you get access to light armor and simple weapons, and you get saving throws and wisdom and charisma. Then you get to choose two skills. So just to make sure we utilize our charisma even more, we'll get proficiency in deception and intimidation. Then at first level of Warlock, you get some spell casting known as Pact Magic. It's a special kind of magic that recharges on a short rest, and you have to cast it at its highest level available. It's only available to Warlocks, and it has some benefits, but it also has a very limited amount of spell slots to use. The other thing you get at first level of Warlock is an otherworldly patron, otherwise known as a subclass. And while Dante does plenty of damage with his guns, he hits much harder with his sword. So we're gonna go with a Hexblade. When you choose to be a Hexblade, you get an expanded spell list, you get some additional spells to choose from, but we're gonna save all of our spell casting for the end of this build, and you get the feature Hexblade's Curse. So as a bonus action, you can choose one creature you can see within 30 feet of you. You curse that target for one minute, and you gain bonus to damage rolls against that target. The bonus automatically equals your proficiency bonus. Additionally, any attack you make against the cursed target scores a critical hit on a 19 or a 20 instead of just a 20. And finally, if the cursed target dies, you regain hit points equal to your warlock level plus your charisma modifier, which is a great way to just pick up some health orbs. But more importantly, at first level of warlock, you get the feature Hex Warrior. So you gain proficiency with medium armor, shields, and martial weapons. We won't worry as much about the medium armor part because you're usually just rocking that leather coat, but the martial weapons is going to be pretty helpful. Now, whenever you finish a long rest, you can touch one weapon that you're proficient with and that also lacks the two-handed property. When you attack with that weapon, you can use your charisma modifier instead of your strength or dexterity. So now when it comes to damage, we only need to worry about one stat. The obvious downside here is that it doesn't allow you to use two-handed weapons. And I would definitely say the Sword of Sparta and Alistar would definitely fall under more of a great sword category, which is a two-handed weapon. But don't worry, we have a way around that. At second level, you get some Eldritch Invocations, which are special ways to enhance your Warlock abilities. And then at third level of Warlock, you get a Pact Boon. So we're definitely gonna take Pact of the Blade. This allows us to create any type of melee weapon, and you're automatically proficient with it. And the thing about Hex Warrior allowing you to use your Charisma modifier for everything is that it automatically applies to every packed weapon you conjure with this feature no matter the weapon's type. And here's something that can get very tricky. If you want to get very into the rules as written, Hex Warrior is just saying that Pact of the Blade automatically applies to every packed weapon you conjure. Not necessarily saying that you have to do the full long rest and all the other stuff. So you can actually dual wield if you really wanted to. So if you have Agni and Rudra or any of the other dual wield style weapons, you can apply it to both of them. At least technically you can, but we're gonna more focus on one weapon at a time. 
Then as you level up in Warlock, you get more and stronger spell slots. Those spell slots do max out at fifth level, but you also get the feature Mystic Arcanum, allowing you to cast a sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth level spell, but you can only cast each of them once per long rest. Then you also get more invocations. You get some ability score improvements, and most notably, you get more features from your otherworldly patrons. So we're gonna take our Warlock all the way to 17th level because that's pretty much where Warlocks max out. They get a small bump at max level, but it doesn't help as much as a multi-class would. So let's go ahead and power through everything you get. At sixth level of being a Hexblade, you get a Cursed Spectre. So you can curse the soul of a person you slay, temporarily binding it to your service. It can attack alongside you and help you out in a few various ways. This doesn't apply quite as much to Dante, but it's still kind of a cool feature. Then at 10th level of being a Hexblade, you get Armor of Hexes. So if the target cursed by your Hexblade's curse hits you with an attack roll, you can use your reaction to roll a d6. If you roll a 4 or higher, the attack misses you regardless of its roll. So even if your enemy crits, you still have a 50-50 chance to just completely dodge the attack. Then at 14th level of Hexblade, you get Master of Hexes. So now when a creature cursed by your Hexblade's curse, dies, you can apply that curse to a different creature within 30 feet of you. The only downside is that you don't regain any hit points from doing this. Then by the time you hit 17th level in Warlock, you've mostly maxed out and you've already got your 9th level Mystic Arcanum. So for 18th level overall, we're going to do a multi-class. And I was very tempted to go with a Paladin because you get very smitey and you can deal a heck of a lot of damage, but that felt a little too goody-goody being a Paladin and that's definitely not Dante's style. So instead, we're just gonna multi-class into Fighter. When you take your first level of Fighter, you get a fighting style, and focusing more on the giant swords that you're gonna wield rather than the ranged weapons, we're gonna grab Great Weapon Fighting. So when you roll a one or a two on the damage die, you can re-roll that damage. And this is gonna be very helpful in a little bit when we start really raking in the numbers. Also at first level of Fighter, you get Second Wind, so you can use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus your Fighter level, once per short or long rest. Then at second level of fighter you get action surge so you can use two actions on a single turn once per short or long rest and then at third level of fighter you get a martial archetype otherwise known as a subclass and i was very tempted to go with cavalier because that's more about riding into combat and dante has a pretty badass motorcycle but it's more about protecting your allies and you're going to be rocking solo most of the time so instead we're going to get a little more technical with a battle master battle masters get combat superiority so they have four superiority dice which are d8s and they can use them on maneuvers allowing them to do special kinds of attacks. And frankly, the maneuvers you take don't matter that much. You just want to make sure you grab something that's going to add superiority dice to your damage. But if you want something specific that I would choose, feel free to check out my Patreon linked in the description down below where I'll have all the character sheets for this build as well as all of my other builds. But now that we've hit max level, we need to sort out where all those ability score improvements went. I would take the first one and throw it into Charisma, boosting it by two points. Then take the second ability score improvement and boost our Charisma by one point and our Constitution by one point, maxing out our charisma and rounding out our constitution. Then at 12th level, I'll grab a feat, but I want to finish off these numbers first because at 16th level, I'd go ahead and boost up our dexterity by two points, which will help our armor because spoiler alert, we're going to be using mage armor because whether you use your leather jacket, which would be more like leather armor, or you use something like mage armor, your dexterity score is really going to help. As far as that feat, I would grab at 12th level, I would grab great weapon master. You're hitting with some really big weapons and this has two absolutely awesome benefits. The first of which is that if you score a critical hit with a melee weapon or reduce a creature to zero hit points with a melee weapon, you can make one additional melee weapon attack as a bonus action. But when it comes to boosting up that damage, the other feature you get from Great Weapon Master is that before you make a melee weapon attack with a heavy weapon, you can choose to take a minus five penalty to the attack roll. If the attack still hits, you get a plus 10 to the attack's damage, which is a pretty massive boost. But now let's sort out those invocations that you get from being a warlock, which will help in a lot of ways. Personally, I would take armor of shadows because it's a little more helpful than just basic leather or studded leather armor, if only by a tiny bit. And I would follow that up with agonizing blast. There's no way we're going to be able to avoid taking the eldritch blast cantrip because it shoots out a ton of beams, which are just blasts. And when you're shooting rapid fire with your pistols, ebony and ivory, agonizing blast is going to help boost up that damage. Because 
because it allows you to add your charisma modifier to every beam that comes out. And you can do four blasts with a single cantrip. Then once you get your fifth level invocation, you gotta grab Thirsting Blade, allowing you to attack with your packed weapon twice instead of just once. Then the next invocation I would grab is Eldritch Smite. This is really gonna boost up your damage because it allows you to expend your Warlock spell slots for an extra 1d8 force damage plus another 1d8 for every level of the spell slot, meaning that you can deal an extra 68 force damage. And it knocks your target prone if it happens to be huge or smaller. Then the next invocation I would grab is Improved Packed Weapon, just giving you a plus one bonus to your attack and damage rolls with your packed weapon. And you can conjure different types of packed weapons. So now instead you can use a short bow, long bow, light crossbow, or heavy crossbow. And this is gonna be helpful for the massive arsenal of ranged weapon that Dante has access to. And you can still swap them pretty quickly because Pact of the Blade only requires you to use an action to summon the weapon. Then another massive damage boost you can get is from the invocation Life Drinker. This allows you to add your Charisma modifier to any attacks you're dealing with your Pact weapon. So now you get to add your Charisma modifier to that Pact weapon twice once from Hex Warrior, and once from Life Drinker. You get one more invocation to choose, but I'll just save that for the character sheet on Patreon. But if you're following along on your end, you can choose whatever fits your playstyle best. Now it's time to start diving into some spells where we can start dealing some real damage. Make sure to grab plenty of cantrips that'll help you out. On top of shooting your guns with Eldritch Blast, you also want to hit a little harder with your sword for singular attacks with Booming Blade, or if you need to hit a couple enemies at once, grab Green Flame Blade. If you happen to be surrounded, Follow it up with Sword Burst so you can swing your sword all around you. Then when it comes to first level spells, you automatically get Charm Person from your variant Tiefling. And you want to grab Hex because if you're doing a lot of hits back to back, it's going to boost it up by 1d6 per hit. Also make sure to grab Protection from Evil and Good because it helps you against Aberrations, Celestials, Elementals, Fae, Fiends, and Undead, which is basically everything that Dante fights. You want a little more defense to block any attacks just in case and grab the spell Shield, boosting your armor class by 5 as a reaction. Then once you get to second level spells, you're going to want to grab Shadow Blade for a slightly different kind of weapon, but most importantly, you're going to want to grab the spell Old person. It allows you to target a humanoid. It makes a wisdom saving throw, and if it fails, it becomes paralyzed for the duration. And paralyzed is pretty darn brutal. You can upgrade this at higher levels to hold monster, which will basically make it so you can target anything as long as it's not undead, but becoming paralyzed makes the target of this completely incapacitated. So that creature can't take actions or reactions, it can't move or speak, it automatically fails any strength or dex saves, and attack rolls against the creature also have advantage. But most importantly and most brutally is that any attack that hits the creature if the attacker is within five feet of it automatically critically hits. And this is where we can get so much damage while still only fighting solo. Because with all of the invocations, our giant sword that we're attacking with and this spell active, you get to deal 2d6 damage from your greatsword. You get a plus one because it's an improved packed weapon. You get another plus 10 from your great weapon master. You get to add your charisma modifier once from just being a hex warrior. And you get to add it again thanks to your life drinker invocation. Then if you have your hex blades curse active, you get to add your proficiency bonus of plus six to that damage. And then on top of all that, throw in an Eldritch Smite, adding another 6d8 smite damage. Then on top of all of your warlock stuff, throw in a superiority die and add another d8. Then don't forget, you're critically hitting, which means any dice that you roll, you get to roll twice as many. So you're gonna be doing 4d6 with the sword, 12d8 with the smite, and 2d8 with the superiority die, bringing your grand total for a single attack to a possible 163 damage. Then you get another attack from your Thirsting Blade, allowing you to deal all of that again. Then, because you're automatically critting, your Great Weapon Master feature activates, so you can attack one more time as a bonus action with this massive sword dealing all of that damage one more time, which will use up all of your Warlock spell slots, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean you have to stop with the damage, because you still have your action surge from being a fighter. You get to deal all the damage except for the smite damage one more time, losing out on the possible 96 damage from your smite, but still dealing a total of 67 damage for your first attack from action surge, and then you get to do 
one more attack with the second attack from your action surge, but this one loses out on the 2d8 because you've used all your superiority dice at this point, bringing you to just a measly extra 51 damage. Bringing your total damage if you cast hold person or hold monster ahead of time to 607 damage in a single turn. And don't worry, we do have a way to boost that up, but it does require somebody else to help out a little bit. But first we gotta get through the rest of these spells. There's a handful more to get through and I'll make sure all of them are available on my Patreon's character sheet. But the last two I really wanna mention are Elemental Weapon because most of the weapons that you have going throughout the Devil May Cry games do have some sort of elemental damage. And this allows you to basically enchant your weapon to deal some sort of extra elemental damage. And then just to dash around the battlefield, I would also grab Far Step. It essentially allows you to teleport on every single bonus action, which really helps with your overall mobility. Then when it comes to your Mystic Arcanums, the sixth level spell I would grab is Tasha's Otherworldly Guys, so you have some sort of transformation into a more devilish type of character. It'll give you wings on your back, which feels very accurate for when you turn into your more devil form. You have plus two bonus to your armor class, and you get some general immunities, as well as a few other benefits, but most of those you already get from your other warlock features. Then as far as the seventh level Mystic Arcanum, I would grab Crown of Stars. It's a generally pretty powerful spell, allowing you to deal some radiant damage as a bonus action, shooting out beams of light. Then just because you're a smart ally, for the eighth level Mystic Arcanum, we're gonna grab Power Word Stun, just because sometimes you just say something so ridiculous people can't even respond. And then as far as the ninth level Mystic Arcanum, we gotta grab Blade of Disaster. This is gonna be like having the full-blown Sword of Sparta, and it allows you to attack twice with it as your bonus action. It deals 4d12 force damage with a single hit, and it scores a critical hit on an 18 or higher on your roll of the d20. But on top of that, your critical hits don't just do twice as much damage, they actually do more than that. A critical hit with a Blade of Disaster actually deals 12d12 force damage. And if you're swinging this twice as a bonus action, you might be wondering why you wouldn't just go with that instead of the combo I already listed out. Well, this does require concentration, which would take away from your hold monster or hold person. And if your enemy's not paralyzed, that means you don't automatically critically hit. So you'd actually deal a little less damage overall because you wouldn't get the bonuses to all of the other attacks that you have since this is only attacking twice as your bonus action. But if you do have somebody helping you out and they cast hold person or hold monster on your enemy, that means you do automatically crit. So your bonus action attack will do more damage and both of your action surge attacks will do more damage as well. You can still deal up to 163 damage with your first and second attack. Then as your bonus action, you get to attack twice with that Blade of Disaster and they can both automatically crit. You don't get to add your Great Weapon Master bonus, your Life Drinker bonus, your Charisma modifier, or your Improved Back to the Blade or Superiority Dice to it, but that's okay because it's still gonna deal a crap ton of damage, and you can still add your Hexblade's Curse to each one of those attacks, dealing up to 144 damage just from the Blade of Disaster, and then another plus six, bringing it to 150 damage from your Hexblade's Curse, and you get to do that twice with a single bonus action bringing your bonus action damage to 300 damage. Then the first attack of your action surge gets to use that Eldritch Smite and all of your other bonuses doing another 163 damage. And then the last attack from your action surge won't get the Eldritch Smite anymore because you're all out of spell slots at this point, but you still get to add in everything else, including that superiority dice, bringing the final attack to a total of 67 and making the overall damage for a single turn 856, which is absolutely insane. That would be more than enough damage to take down a Tarask, the most dangerous creature in all of D&D 5th edition. Too bad that the Tarask is immune to being paralyzed. I wound up polling my Discord chat about what type of character to build and what video game series to build from, not to mention the Devil May Cry series has been requested plenty of times in the comments, so if you want me to build anything, let me know in the comments down below, or if you have any opinions about this build, let me know down there as well. If you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds, or if you just want to help support the content that I create, check out that Patreon link, just like all of these incredible people, or the especially awesome player character patrons, Elisa Martinez, Anthony McDonald, Tarkan Dermis, Alistar Nix, Ted Z, Digimit, Andrew Nobles, Melendez Robinson, Karkat Kitsune, Z13, Viral Nervar, Yaksha Senpai, The Dino 21, and Benjamin. 
Then going above and beyond that is my Dungeon Master level patrons that I actually DM D&D sessions for. Daniel Sweeten, Conman ZX, Nathaniel Sims, Cyber Society, Firebeam, Talon Starkey, Demiurge, Daniel Galvin, Michael, Eric Wade, and Zalvador. Then finally going above and beyond anything I ever expected is my God tier level patron, Game Steak. I cannot thank him enough for everything he does to help contribute to this channel. So a very special thank you to him. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to be an overly charismatic half demon that deals insane amounts of damage playing as Dante from Devil May Cry in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition.